Before we get into our message, uh, I'll do a little funny. Um, it says, after a husband and wife have had a heated argument, the wife calls her mother and tells her mother that we fought again. And then the, the, the daughter says, I'm coming to live with you. The mother says, no, 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 dear. He must pay for his mistake. So I'm coming to live with you. <laughs> yeah, the mother-in-law in the house, amen. So as we move into this theme for the month, tilling the soil of consciousness. And as we read, I pray this month, chapter 17, mental equivalence. Tilling the soil of consciousness. Remembering as a human thinketh, so it is. And let us also remember that we're still in this Lenten season, a time of fasting from untilled consciousness, meaning anything negative. The Lenten season, a time of progressive spiritual growth and unfoldment, a time when positive prayer should be first and foremost in the consciousness. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about spiritual practice. To till is to turn over, to break up soil, mind. And how deep we go will determine how rich the harvest. When we look at tilling and soil from a gardening standpoint, soil, a rich mineral and organic material with potential to nourish and support plant life. Think on that, bring that in. When we're talking about soil, we're talking about a raw material and an organic material with the potential to nourish and support plant life. So hold that. And then eventually it will shape the beautiful geological formation of the earth. Soil is absorbent, porous, and adaptable. Soil is dark and can block light, yet it allows seeds to respond to light's energy by supporting beautiful growth. Soil can be stony or soft, dry or rich, poor or well-nourished. It can absorb good or not so good substances to be enriched or contaminated. Soil is passive but also takes up a kind of micro life of its own through seeds, weeds, insects, and fungi that grow in it. Soil does unpredictable things. It can't choose to make itself anything in particular. It must be acted upon with cultivation to have order, cleanliness, and a design purpose. Tilling, which can mean cultivating, plowing, labor, and strive after, tend to, watch over. Tilling is labor in the soil, the act of organizing, preparing, fertilizing, and a stirring up that raw material. So looking at soil and its possibilities, let us think on what possibilities reign in mind. 
mind is likened to soil, for it is matter and substance that has potential and possibilities to do and be. But unlike soil, we have the ability to monitor, choose, and eliminate. To till the mind is to break up and turn over uncharted territory. Scientists tells us we only utilize 10 to 15% of our brain capacity. So when we awaken that sleeping giant that's within us, we are then aware of more mental energy at our disposal. And with newness awaiting, we can eliminate old, stale, blessing blocking thoughts, false information, lies told that we believed, tilling the soil of the mind prepares that mind for our dreams, desires, and purpose to be planted, cultivated, and realized. When a seed is planted, we clearly witness eventually the demonstration of the planting. The seed obviously trusted the soil to support it for it sits there until, hear me, the seed obviously trusted the soil because the seed didn't jump out. The seed sat there until something happened. So there's that power, that energy, that creative force that when we plant a seed in the ground, something breaks it open, that something is God. And then something comes forth. And then no matter what happens in the planet, in the world, in the elements, in the atmosphere, that seed breaks through the ground and becomes what it was intended to do, to be. So look at us, because that tells me that's faith. So we should have that same trust and faith as the seed to stay put in the consciousness of truth until, and I don't mean physically stay put, I mean mentally, spiritually, consciously stay. As in Genesis when Jacob said, I will not let thee go until thou has blessed me. In other words, I will not be distracted. I will not be baited. I will not be detoured. I will not worry. I will not be doubtful. I am believing God for my dream, my need, my desire. For when we till our consciousness of the old belief, we are then preparing for the new. When I look at Laminations 3, 22, 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. So great is our faithfulness. And then the psalmist reiterates in 105, for the Lord is good and God loves, endures forever. 
God's faithfulness continues through all generations. It is telling us that the God that assisted those that we admire, the history that we look at, that that same love is with us right now. So as we till, we are opening ourselves for greater wisdom, awareness, understanding. We are preparing, enhancing our spiritual growth, which will affect the physical. So whatever we're thinking, will affect our physical movement. So when we're holding anything against anyone, when we are regretting, when we are revenging, that will show up in our body. Disease, hurt, pain, weakness will show up. And it also shows up in our finances. It shows up in our relationships and all that comes with it. Tilling the soil of consciousness breaks up and removes the things, the thoughts, the weeds that does not belong. In order to have a beautiful garden, you have to till, you have to remove, you plant and then you let go and you let go. Spiritual tilling must be accompanied by our tending. Tending is watching and responding to the particular needs through conscious observation. Meaning we can't just show up in the different services during the week when we tune in uh, to Reverend Amon, when we tune in to the different spaces and places that we go, is not just showing up and being hearers. We got to be doers. People can always tell you how to till your soil. Or we can even hire people to come and do for us. We can have assistance, but we can never have anyone but the one, our creator, our father, to do it through, as, and for us. The harvest, the fruit that we want out of life is up to each of us. The limits we place through age, living situations, health challenges, what they say, what he said, what she said, and we could go on down that list, is not a factor with God. Let us now allow life's changes and circumstances be a factor that works for us, a lesson, a learning. Metaphysically, in Genesis, it says, if Sarah can have a baby at 90 years old, and we're talking metaphysically, and it could have happened physically, we weren't there. But since it was written, surely we can give birth to our dreams and our desires. Where we move in the subconscious, from unbelief to faith, from mortal to spiritual consciousness, allowing the guidance of the Lord to sow in new land, which is symbolic with a new consciousness. In the book of Matthew 13, 1 through 23, in the book of Mark 4, 1 through 20, in the book of Luke 8, 1 through 15, it says more or less of the same. They're talking about the same thing in all these three parables. They reveal to us the importance of building 
a strong consciousness of belief, trust, and truth. A consciousness that is open and receptive. A tilled consciousness, breaking up the old, removing unnecessary debris, and nurturing our consciousness, nurturing our mind, our thoughts. So when we plant a seed, when we plant a thought, and we go and we put food, feed it, miracle grow is what we put on our plants in our garden. But the word of God is what we put on our consciousness. So when we do that, It grows. We nurture it. When Mark quoted Jesus and said, for he that have to him shall be given. He that have not from him shall be taken away. Even that which he has. Mm. This may appear to be an unjust principle, but with understanding and then that deeper meaning, no different than Matthew, the talents. One had 10, one had five, and one had one. So when we think about that, the 10 and the five multiplied their gifts and their talents, their blessings. But then that one went and buried and hid the talent. We are alive because of God. We have something, the greatest something, because of God. What is that something? Consciousness. The 10 and the five tilled the soil of consciousness and multiplied. The one talent was worried, fearful, and concern of loss. So therefore, allowing the weeds and the debris to take control in the garden. The garden is our mind. And then it choked. that Those weeds and that debris, it choked the life of the infinite possibilities. It choked it out of its spiritual gifts and talents. Life, love, truth, substance, intelligence, faith, and power. Every inherent attribute of man's being have its roots in God. All that we are, all that we have, are that we are supposed to be to the fullest of our abilities. When we recognize that, when we recognize that, that we are because God is. I am. Our breath this morning is because of God. God called us forth. We still have work to do. Let us till, break up, all of that that we have no need for. Let us prepare the mind for newness. The 10, five talents, the confident ones, which uses that which was given, meets the divine law with expectation and assurance. Then you are led to greater possibilities. Oh, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is the, is the consciousness of having done our best. Not people's best, but the best of God that's within us. Our best is better, greater, when we release the lesser 
and embrace our divine power for everything is done in my. It is. It, 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 whatever it is in your mind is done unto us as we believe. For whatever is planted and nurtured in consciousness, it will break through the soil, ground of our thinking. It will manifest. The one talent was, is too cautious, fearful, worried about. So it buries and hides the blessing in uncertain soil. Do we get that? What God has given us, our individual blessing, our individual knowing, our individual understanding, our individual king and queenship. If we don't nurture and magnify and multiply our gifts, we then bury and hide it, therefore taking from the world. That's why we have to have a pandemic because we're not expressing fully our God, queen, and kingship, our divinity. We're not expressing it. So something has to come to slap us in the face and shake us up. And we have to stay until we awaken. Because we have planted our gifts and blessings in uncertain soil, meaning we don't have the faith enough, the trust enough, the belief to know that everything works together for the good of those. Therefore, we're meeting our lack of faith condemnation, and then consequence. Not tilling the consciousness of that lower thought, the weeds and debris, infested mindset. Not tilling produces persons who have talents they are afraid to use because it seems insignificant. So today, after all that listening, to sermons and lectures and messages from all the people that we admire. Not listening, just only hearing. And those are two different things, family. We can hear a lot of things, but to truly listen, and to truly open one's consciousness up and to allow that consciousness to drop down in your word that you speak to people, to yourself. And then allowing that word to move to the heart center and then drop down to the soul where it houses that spirit and presence of God. And when we do that, there's a movement of mind when we embrace the wisdom of God flowing through our consciousness, the wisdom of God moving through our word, the movement of God moving through our heart center, the movement of God housing itself in the soul of each of us. When we can do that, there is a movement. We are eliminating that that does not belong, and we are embracing the divine. Let us claim our spiritual nature. Let us claim our inheritance. Let us claim our boldness, our strength, our courage. Be who God said we are. 
I speak an affirmation for my day, every day. I speak it for my life, my loved ones, my family, which includes my church family, my ministry, my friends, my community, my world, every day and during the day. And last week I spoke an affirmation and I had to ask myself, do I really believe this? See, we can speak, we can pray, we can affirm, but it has no meaning, it has no effect, it cannot come alive if I don't believe it. I can have a pack of seeds. I can go and buy a tomato plant, but if I don't plant it in the soil, if I don't put that seed in the ground, it has no chance, it's just a seed. If I don't believe it, if I don't plant it, it can't come to pass. A tilled consciousness believes and trust that a thing greater than the human can do much more. A tilled consciousness has faith in the spirit, that thing that creates all things. As the one talent who did nothing but hid, is each of us that doesn't till the soil of our consciousness. Therefore, life does not multiply in joy, but accumulates challenges, hardships, unwanted experiences. Hear me, as the one talent who did nothing but hide is that one that does not allow life to multiply, but accumulates challenges, hardships, unwanted experiences. When and if there is anything in our living that appears slow and sluggish, diseased, the feeling of loneliness, there is untilled soil, our belief that is buried in the subconscious. But in stillness, in meditation, in prayer, in affirmation, let us find our I can, I am consciousness. Let us locate it because it's right there with you. When we believe in limitation, low self-esteem, unworthiness, we plant that in the soil of our consciousness. So let us look at consciousness, the sense of awareness, realization, knowledge. And then in knowledge, if we carve out, put a parenthesis on the first four letters, no, the realization of our no. I know, what do I know? And when we know, then there's knowledge of. The sum of all ideas, emotions, beliefs, trust and faith accumulated in, in that which is affecting our present state of being. Back of everything is a thought. This is where we establish our spiritual identity. Back of everything is a thought. So let us establish ourselves. Ernest Holmes in chapter 17 says, if we know that the power with which we are dealing is principle, we're talking about truth, facts, If we know that the power 
with which we are dealing is principle and not personality. What the human has come to act upon as self. Holmes goes on to say, if we know and believe that mind is only the actor, cause, effect, substance, intelligence, truth, and power, then we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry or be concerned about. You, do you understand? We don't have nothing to fear for God is on our side with God for us. What and who can be against us? Holmes says, he goes on to remind us that if we have a real embodiment of spirit, we can demonstrate that which we desire. We can erase unwanted thoughts from consciousness by releasing and pouring in opposite thoughts. For positive thoughts meets negative thoughts and then neutralize their power and their effect. The only reason we experience limitation is because we have not, uh, have not allowed the divine to fully express as through and for us. Listen, family, we are worthy. Till the soil of your consciousness, turn it over, break it up, make room for newness. Let us allow a miracle to take place. A miracle is a happening and a blessing that words can express or explain. Miracles are only signs of God's working. A tilled consciousness is the witness. A tilled consciousness convinces one's unbelieving thoughts to transform to truth. I'm gonna close with this story. I heard this story, which I witnessed to be true. A woman with crossed eyes told those eyes, they were not of the flesh, but the eyes of the spirit. Hear me? She told her eyes, you are not a flesh, but you are eyes of the spirit. And that they were of one mind, perfect and harmonious in every way. That was her affirmation. After the time of affirming, declaring, and feeling, she was expecting something from that affirmation. She had joy through that journey, her eyes came into right relations. She was healed of the defect in consciousness and in thought. Her story says more than that, because we're talking about physical. When we think about eyes, we're thinking about our physical eyes. She found that she perceived truth much more clearly than ever before. Not only the eye as an organ of sight, but the spiritual perception became clarified. And this can only happen when we till the soil of consciousness, recognizing what we think is a mental equivalent waiting to unfold. If we are awakened, the con to the consciousness of life, there can be no death. If we, if we have the consciousness of abundance and plenty, there can be no lack. With God, there is never ending blessings and abundance. We should not be afraid, feeling lonely or anxious for we are always in the presence of God. Till the soil of consciousness. That means turn over and break up any and everything that blocks your blessings. You want a healing? Till the consciousness. You want source and resource? Till the consciousness. You want companionship? 
till the consciousness. You want a life that's filled with joy till the consciousness. You want to feel loved and be loved till the consciousness. Because everything that appears to block the blessings of God is an untilled consciousness. That means that we are sitting in that same mindset. You want something new? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I pray this month that every moment, every day from this moment forward, that we're tilling, that we're turning over, that we're breaking up, that we're allowing the newness of God, the wisdom of God, the presence of God, the power of God to move like never before. And it has nothing to do with your age, with your social status, with your bank account. It has everything to do with what you are thinking right now. Thank you all for listening. Peace and abundant blessings. It is so, and so it is.